Okay, so uh, Beast. And this is a film that I could really get my teeth into and that I, you know, and, and spoke to me and worked. So Beast, it's uh, directed by Michael Pierce. It is set on uh, Jersey and it stars Jesse Buckley and Johnny Flynn, both of whom I have to say are completely terrific. Jesse Buckley plays Mole, who is um, a young woman. She's uh, 20 something and she's still basically at home under the thumb of her mother, brilliantly played by Geraldine James in very, very sort of scary form. But also, you know, we were talking before about that idea of having a character who is, you know, scary and dangerous, but also has an element of pathos. You get the sense that there is something of, there is a sense of fear in the amount of control that Geraldine James's character has over Jesse Buckley's character of Mole. Anyway, Along, uh, there's a birthday party, and the birthday party is nominally for Mole, but she is immediately uh, upstaged by her siblings. And you, there's a lovely scene in which you, you realise that she's very much a supporting player in her own life, that she is not centre stage in her own life, that she's been pushed to the edges, that she's, where, wherever she goes, she's, she's sort of, she's suppressed. So she decides to jump she decides to skip so she goes off she leaves her own birthday party and she goes off into jersey and she goes to a nightclub and the nightclub is kind of slightly drunken experience in which she meets a man who's not so great but then she meets this character pascal played by johnny flynn who is basically a woodsman there's a little touch of heathcliff about him or a little touch of you know mellers um he is everything that her home life isn't He's, he has a slightly vagabond element to him. He's carrying a rifle. He appears to be a poacher. And she immediately sees in him something which connects with her. Needless to say, when she goes home, her mother is less than impressed. You're safe. I was worried sick. What happened? I um, come here. I won't bite. I felt funny, so I went for a walk. And I fell asleep on the beach. I thought we were the best friends. We are. Then don't lie to me. I just wanted to go dancing. I put all that effort into making it special and you wanted to go dancing. So sorry. Mom, it was irresponsible and thoughtless. You've come so far, Mole. I worry when things like this happen. It won't happen. Again, I promise. It was your birthday. We'll let this one go. Eat your cake. One of the things I really like about that scene is it's the little indications of things which are important. You've come so far, Mole. Later on, someone says to Johnny Flynn's character of Pascal, oh, Mole's a wild one, and everyone doesn't say anything. So there's something in her past. There's something that's happened that will start to be revealed during the course of the narrative. The key thing is that she sees in Pascal this kindred spirit. Meanwhile, the island is being haunted by a spate of assaults. They've just found another body. And the finger of suspicion is starting to point towards outsiders and is starting to point in the direction of, of, of Pascal. But no matter what anybody says about him, she's not having it. Why? Because she loves him and she'll defend him because she, he's somehow bamboozled her about who he is. There's a line where somebody says, he can't love. He, he's, you know, he's just using you. He, he doesn't understand what love is. Or... Is it because she sees in him something that she sees in herself and that, in fact, they are both two sides of the same coin? When they very first, when they met for the first time, she's cut her hand on broken glass. And he says very significantly, he says, you're wounded. I can fix that. And that is a, sort of the key to their relationship. What the film then does, and I think it does it rather brilliantly, is to play with the audience's expectations as to what each of these characters are. I mean, on the one hand, you know, Pascal is this this wild character. He seems to have a very dark past. Everybody looks at him suspiciously. There is reason to believe that he is not what he appears to be, and yet maybe that's just everybody's suspicions. In the case of her, she seems to come from this incredibly conservative, uh, cloistered environment. She appears to have never had a life outside of the house, but 
maybe there is something about her that's that's not quite as innocent. And what I really liked about the film is it, on the one hand, it has its feet in the ground. It has a very sort of earthy quality. There's a lovely sequence in which when she's been out and she comes back and she's got dirt under her fingernails and she scrapes her fingernails along this cream coloured couch and it leaves these sort of mud traces, which says such a lot about the character. But it has a sort of fa fairy tale line to it. I mean, on the one hand, she's the princess in the tower who's rescued from the tower and taken off by her prince. On the other hand, you know, the title is Beast. Maybe he is Beast. And the title, which is deliberately ambiguous because you don't know to whom the title refers. Does it necessarily refer to him? Maybe it refers to her. Maybe it refers to something else that's just stalking the island. Also, it refers simultaneously to Beauty and the Beast. And I thought to Valerian Borovchik's Beast, La Bette, um, which again is that sort of its version of that fairy story, but turned upside down and turned into a very sort of controversially erotic film, which incidentally was banned forever and ever in the 1970s when it first came out. There are also hints of Archipelago, the Joanna Hogg film, um, which starred Tom Hiddleston, you know, before Tom Hiddleston was, you know, this huge international star that he now is, about families going mad on small islands and Tonally, it reminded me a little bit of... There's a Francois Ozo film from the 90s called uh, See the Sea, Regard la Mer, which does this brilliant thing of contrasting bright island sunshine with this kind of dark, duplicitous, dangerous, murderous theme that's going on underneath. And it does this really, really sort of nice juxtaposition of, you know, external beauty and internal darkness. And the most... I think the most intriguing thing about it, do you remember when you interviewed Rachel Weiss for My Cousin Rachel? Uh, yes, I do. And she said a brilliant thing. She said, you asked her whether whether she thought that Rachel was, was guilty or not. And she said that what she'd done is that she'd made a decision as to whether Rachel was guilty. And she was going to tell the director, and Roger Michelle, and he said, keep it to yourself. Just keep it to yourself and just play, you know, play the character like that. And there's a lot of that in what Johnny Flynn does. And in fact, I read an interview in which he pretty much did something similar, that he made a decision about his own character and then he that's how he played it. And the way in which the film is directed, it's very difficult to keep those balancing acts on track. And I think one of the things I really liked about My Cousin Rachel is you get to the end of it and did she, didn't she? All the way through um, Beast, what the film is asking you to do is to make up your own mind about what's happening. I mean, and it's a really clever balancing act and it's done, it's really, really well done. So I thought it had real fairy tale charm and appeal and weirdness. It's very twisted. I thought the two central performances had real chemistry, real spark. I thought it was very boldly directed, very confidently directed and written. Had a and the interior is done in Surrey and the exterior is done in Jersey, but it had a real sort of sense of its place, of its location. And I came out of it and thought that was a really satisfyingly, you know, twisted psychodrama with, you know, lusty emotions. And I say, and it managed, <laughs> I say, yes, that's, that's Hugh Grant in, um, uh, is it layer of the white worm? I say, um, and uh, and it manages that balancing act that all the way through it's playing with your you know with your allegiances and playing with your expectations, and you're looking at these two characters, and you're seeing the world through her eyes, but she is also an unreliable cinematic narrator. I'm not been narrating her own life, but you're seeing it through her eyes, but her own eyes are not necessarily reliable. I thought it was really good. I was really impressed.